Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, so, sih bisa bahasa Indonesia, Jadi tapi ya. lebih lancar kalau bahasa Inggris. Insyaallah yang soca baca Inggris ya, sama-sama sama Om Agus, eh Ustad. <laughs> Tapi nolongin translate, nolongin apa um, relate what I have to say to uh, a lesson uh, for the community, inshallah. Amen. So my name is uh, Ardian Sochawibowo, 40 years old. Um, recently moved into the Indianapolis area and. Uh, and fortunate that the community has embraced myself, my wife, and my new daughter, Alhamdulillah. Right. Um, my background, I grew, I came here. I, I um, was born in Indonesia, grew up in Indo- in America. So I always have, I say myself as not half and half, but I've grown most of my life in the American culture, 80%, 20%. But Alhamdulillah. I've grown up with that Indonesian um, community, uh, learning through the Indonesian community. But obviously, growing up as, as an Indonesian in American culture, you are going to be exposed to that American culture. So there are some parts of me that are Indonesian culture, a lot of me that are the American culture. But I embrace both, inshallah, for the good of myself and my community growing forward. Right. So there's a cultural divide sometimes that I feel, even now when I go into Pengajian or something like that, I feel guarded. Why? Because I sometimes feel I cannot be 100% myself because there's a circle of this Indonesian culture and then what I've grown up as an American culture. And perhaps even for myself, I always feel that there's a little bit of judgment that I'm not 100% Indonesian, right? But I try to be. I try to convey as part of my duty for myself and my family and my community. So that's why I want to try to give understanding of my family dynamics so perhaps it can be relatable to others that have the same type of family dynamics. I grew up in Lexington most of my childhood along with Om Tante Bambang, Om August and their families. So they've seen me grow up since I was elementary school middle, high school, going through college and graduate school, and now they've seen me have my own, my first child, right? So I try to grow up as expected being the firstborn. What should the firstborn be? What should the firstborn do? A lot of pressure for the firstborn, right? And I try to maintain what my parents teach me, ties with family, uh, the best I can with community and religion. Three things that I'll bring up in my and what I have to say is community and culture, religion, and danger. Why danger? I'll explain later. Yeah, we know religion. We learn religion. Islam is, is how we live and how we learn to live our lives. Alhamdulillah. That's always a constant. That's always in the background. We need reminders, but. You have to trust in one another. Parents teaching trust, uh, parents that are teaching, trusting that their children do listen, take those lessons, take them to heart, and take them for themselves and learn, adjust, and incorporate into their own lives. No matter how it is your way, their way, but they, at least they listen and they incorporate into their, into your li- into their own lives, right? Religion and duty is what brings us together today as a community. Uh, my hope and my short story can, can bring us together and understand the importance of ummah and community. Um, so, leads to involvement of pengajian. What is pengajian? Yeah. There are many, many more people in this community that, that have more history in this community that probably should be talking to the community, right? Fortunately, I, I've been given the opportunity to talk. Um, why? Why, right? Because um, to me, Pangajian is family, community, fun as a kid, 
as you see your friends when you grow up struggle to understand during the youth because it becomes more important and becomes more of something that you need to take into your life and understand. So you struggle uh, as you grow, you, under, you just struggle to understand the uh, impact of the Indonesian culture, but then you're going to school and studying in the American culture and you have American friends. So the struggle to understand how to balance both of those. Right? But Pengajian is a support system, a religious study and remembrance. Alhamdulillah, you know, at least we have that. I learned what is community, Indonesian community and culture through Pengajian. I somewhat understand the protocol of Pengajian. My shortcoming as I was growing up is being made to understand clearly the true value, the true essence, and the reason for Pengajian. Perhaps that wasn't made clear to me why we do pengajian. Yeah, we act it, we, could, we come together, we eat, but as children, as young adults, why? You aren't given that why. You're just, get in the car, let's go, we're gonna meet, <laughs> right? There's no reason as to give why we're coming together. Sure, children understand, hey, getting together, we're gonna play, we're gonna play some games, we're gonna eat together, but the <coughs> background, the essence behind it needs to be more, made more clear especially for those generations that are across between American and, and Indonesian culture, all right? So that younger generations such as myself, you know, we have a duty. We have, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm still, even though I understand what pengajian is, I'm still struggling to love pengajian, right? I know what it is, I know what it should be, but I myself, do I love doing it? Do I love coming? All right, that's the struggle for me, to love it, to embrace it, All right? For the lack of understanding, feeling of being an outsider to pengajian, all right? Just because of a small difference in culture and feeling of being a judgment because I'm not 100%, I'm not doing it correctly, all right? And it only, um, you know, so, and it only being a sense of, so right now, Pengajian for me is not a love that I do, it's a duty for myself, my community, my family, a duty, a, not a love that I will want to do, but I will do it because it's my duty, my religion. But I want to grow that love. My hope is to make my generation, those that grew up here, those that have children here, embrace um, and understand if they still have that struggle for pengajian to embrace it, to love it, to incorporate it into, into your life. Mm -hmm. So right now pengajian is my duty. That's why I'm here helping the community, willing to open myself to that community to help us all become more understanding interculturally, intergenerationally, and generational culturally. All right? Those are three separate things, I think. Oh, and I think all three have to be understood. Second point, community, culture, religion, all tied to one another. The tie of all three aspects in our lives is an understanding, right? These, are, these aspects are the reasons we come together, learn, remember religion, see friends and reconnect with the community and support, share, love, and come together in prayer. The struggle is understanding these three aspects, the patience for that understanding, the practice of that understanding, sharing of opinions that lead to understanding rather than just judgment, right? And for the individual, to their family, to their community, the benefit of understanding why we do the essence of pengajian, yeah? Essence of religion. Leads me to my third point, danger. As individuals within our family unit and radiating, radiating outward into the community, we tend to focus on the dangers to our community. We focus the dangers to that community, the dangers that are imposed to the religion that may be attacking it or doing something, right? We become so fearful of those dangers 
that we tend to try to shield ourselves, to protect ourselves against such dangers. But what if I said dangers will always be there? Yeah? Always be there, no matter what, no matter how much you protect. But you can teach, you can protect yourself against those dangers. But rather, what if I say, rather than shielding, try to see danger in a different perspective? How we can understand, cope, and turn into a positive for growth, those dangers, a positive by understanding what those dangers are, and to understand and bring the understanding into the community so that there's not a fear of opening up the community letting others into the community but an embrace of by understanding what dangers can be faced discussion so that there's understanding teaching and then allowance of coping and dealing with that in each individual way so what i always say or how i always look at it and this is from my perspectives of growing in the culture going outside of the culture and exploring other friendships, other cultures as I grew into high school, college, graduate school, right? Just seeing that there's other aspects of just Indonesian culture, Islamic religion, there's other aspects of culture, other aspects of religion that we need to understand so that we understand what we possibly may think or impose as a danger to our community, but actually, having an understanding of others strengthens our community and allows us to be good in identifying and have strength in identifying who we are so that we can face what we perceive as dangers and then kind of just embrace those differences not as something that's against us but something that will make us grow and understand so i always say don't shy your children away from dangers but together make them understand and trust in your teachings that your children have been given those wisdom and that in time when they grow, when they face those dangers, they already know and learn to accept, cope, understand, and turn a negative into a positive for motivation. Because you need motivation when you face dangers to just get over it, to face it, to deal with it. Okay? So to use it as growth for self and community. What can these dangers be? There's a lot, you know, everybody has their own opinions that forms what are their dangers are. But we understand what these dangers can be, but they cannot, they, they, the dangers can be negative, but we use them uh, to become positive, to turn, to use them. Um, so these perspectives of negative, use them as a motivating tool, as a positive means for growth. Right, so I'll give you an example for myself uh, for turning danger, a notion of negative connotation into a positive. First, let's talk about my name, yeah? And giving a, and giving a name to a child. I've recently become a new father, giving a name to a new child. And of course, um, my daughter, my, the mother and I want to give the daughter a beautiful, meaningful name with good meaning, with positive co uh, connotation. What is my daughter's name? Asifa Malaika Danger Wibowo. First time people will hear that will probably see why is there an aspect of danger, a negative connotation in that name. But like I said before, for me, danger is a motivation, a positive connotation why? Take, you know, you take a minute, gather your thoughts, your opinions on why I named my daughter Danger, right? But, and, and I understand culturally and religiously you want to and you should be naming uh, with positive, good, uh, good, good connotation. So, I mean, what are the meanings? Asifa, meaning cure, right? That's a positive, good connotation. Malaika, angel. Right? Danger? Why? Why danger? All right? Why mix the positive and the negative? That is the first thing that probably will, people will have an opinion about rather than understanding why I've given my daughter uh, the name danger. What if I told you Socha, which is my middle name, means danger? You believe it? How do you see me? 
differently, but you see me who, for who I am. And why, why it became like a joke for my, from me teaching, I told my students to call me Socha. And, jo and just, hey, so that they can remember, because Socha, Indonesian names, right? Hard to, hard to pronounce. Om Agus say his son, his son's name, hard to pronounce, so his friends call him Chuck, right? But that was just my way of, my name is Socha, that is my middle name. In Indonesian, it means danger. That got people laughing, but it got my name stuck in their head. Positive connotation rather than negative, right? Um, so, uh, but that, that name has stuck with me. I, yes, I know the real meaning of my name. Madura, Bahasa, and Jawa, it means I. Right, so it means I. I know the na the meaning of my name, but uh, uh, that was just a means for getting my friends to know, learn my name, and for them to learn who I was. Right. So my friends, my family, my coworkers, my in-laws' families, random people know me and embrace me as danger. It be has become a positive connotation. Right. It's become a loving embrace for my friends. To, for them to call me danger, and I respond, and I and I I answer to that name for them, right? And to give my my daughter the name danger imposes all that love, that embrace from my friends, my family, with such positive connotation that her name will give her love and strength from the beginning. So no negative connotation whatsoever. All positive, all love coming from me, my friends my community to my daughter uh, so that she will have that strength, right? <clears throat> the lesson we are taught and made to understand one way by culture and entanglement of religion is to have a name that is a positive connotation. But what if we change the perceived notion of negative connotation into a positive embrace, right? So that leads me back to the patience of understanding. First learn why people do the way they do the reasons behind, they act the way they act. Acceptance, acceptance. What has been taught through culture, religion, is embrace, accepting, and understanding. That is what religion teaches us. But why is it always so easy for us to make quick judgments of, for other people? Using religion as a means to judge sometimes, right? Why? But that acceptance and understanding can be expressed in many ways, such as the, uh, the name and a positive connotation. And with that understanding on how individual communities can embrace culture and religion in our own unique way, so that we can understand and lead to a better community, understanding within the community, so that we can come, come together, have better ties, and just the, have more involvement from intercultural, intergenerational, cultural generational embrace. So we don't segregate one generation of the community to another, but hope to bring older, middle, youngest generation to a community understanding and embrace why we come together, why we have Pungajia. Right. So thank you for allowing me to speak uh, these first minutes.